The gospel comes to us today from St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward bringing five more talents, and saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have, be- I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the other one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless servant, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you, each and every one, in the name of Jesus Christ. $300,000. That's a lot of money. It's a conservative estimate of what a talent is worth in today's money using minimum wage 15 years of paychecks, $300,000 is what somebody would earn over 15 years making minimum wage. That's what a talent is worth. That's the kind of money that this landowner was giving to his servants who were taking care of it while he was gone. Now it says the master went on a journey, this parable that Jesus tells us today. It means he went to a foreign country. He went far, far away. And he entrusted, he handed over these large amounts of money to his servants. And the servants, it appears, don't waste any time at all. The first two get trading with the talents that they have been given. They get busy trading, investing, moving, shaking, doing business with this money that he has given them. And the third gets busy too, but in a very different way. He gets to digging and burying and hiding the talent that he was given or that she was given. There's plenty of time until the master returns, it seems. They they have no no knowledge of when it will be exactly, but that it will be some time. They knew right away what they would do, it seems, these 
all three of them, determined as soon as they got the sums of money. They had it figured out if what had been given to them was a gift or a burden, a joy or, some, or something that what had yoked them, encumbered them, something that enlivened them or something that seemed to oppress or crush them. The first two seem to indicate right away that they know it to be joy and gift and something that enlivens them. But the third who got the only the one talent, and remember that's $300,000, kept it safe, didn't want to lose it. It became a burden to this one. It became oppressive. They never touched it after they dealt with it initially. They put it out of reach. They put it out of mind so they wouldn't have to worry about it. The safest thing in those days was to bury the money, put it in a hole someplace, cover it where nobody knew. That was the best security uh, vault of the day. So when he buried it in the ground and left it and forgot it and put it away safe, it had no impact on his life. At least no interesting and inspiring and enlivening impact in his life, that's for sure. And his reason was all in his perception of the master. He says it at the end that he thought the master was a harsh person, greedy, op opportun opportun opportunistic, opportunistic, cold-hearted. And he was afraid, afraid that he would lose some of the money, um, that the master would be upset if he didn't get what he gave for safekeeping and get it all back. So he wanted to make sure that he returned to the master the original talent. But when he did, he returned it to him unchanged. The talent was still just the one talent. And the servant was also unchanged. Having been given the one talent, doing nothing with it, it had not had any impact on the servant whatsoever. Kind of sad, don't you think? And the master is disappointed. You can tell for sure how the story goes. He buried it. He forgot it. He paid no mind to it. He kept it a secret. He kept, kept, kept it out of reach of his own hands and out of the reach of anyone else's hands. Is this how we think of God? Is it all in our perception about who God is and what God is doing in our lives and what God has given when God has given us life and God has given us all these blessings? What is that for? Are we to hoard it? Are we to hide it? Are we to, to, uh, to uh, do nothing with it? Try not to have any any make any difference in it and let it have no difference in our lives because we think God is harsh, judgmental, opportunistic. The other two servants, the first two, apparently had a different view of their master or at least understood what the master had done in a different fashion. But the third feared the master. And I'm afraid of God at times, and I know others are afraid of God at times, and there's reason to be. God is God. God is beyond us, bigger than us, uh, has more power, all of that, absolutely. And yet, do we see God as harsh, cold-hearted, or warm-hearted? full of compassion, 
wanting to give us life, wanting us to have joy, wanting us to have a, a full, full life, a life that we can appreciate, to use all God's gifts, all the good gifts of God, in order to make more. There's an author who said, sometimes we are creating God in the image of our own fears. And I'm, I think that's what the third servant did. And sometimes we do as well. We create God in the image of our own fears. The master in the end said, so you thought I was harsh, huh? Well, I'll show you what harsh is. And you'll get it. If that's what you wanted, if that's what you expected, if that's what you're asking for, here it is. Does God really like that? I hope God has mercy on us. Maybe this is a parable to wake us up, right? So that we change from sticking away God's grace and God's love and God's compassion and, and all of the blessings that God gives to us, setting it aside, ignoring it, not wanting to touch it, not wanting to be impacted, not be to be changed by it. But look at the first two. They doubled the amount that was given to them. And their master is happy and glad to see that they were faithful and that they were trustworthy in a few things. A few things. A few hundred thousand dollars, up to a million dollars. But he was so happy that they had gone out and engaged and exchanged and traded and, and all of that with that, the talents. And out of that, even more abundance came that could be shared with other people. So he congratulates them and he praises them and he thanks them and he joins in their joy and he invites them into his joy. That's what God is like. And I noticed no one, no one seems to really claim the additional amount. It's more, wasn't that fun? Wasn't that great? Wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't there all sorts of energy, positive energy from that? Wasn't there all sorts of things that happened for the good of others in all of that? Wasn't that fun? Here's more. Do it again. Do it more. Reach out further. But it's not money that God gives us, is it? It's not money. God gives us love. And God gives us forgiveness. And God gives us salvation, new life, new identity fullness, feeding, inspiring. He gives us hope. We can trade and exchange all these wonderful gifts, treasures of God in the world. And there's a sense in which we can, we, can, we can know that when we do that, it will double, it will expand. It won't be depleted, but it will be multiplied. What are we doing while we wait for the Lord's return? We have his gifts, all these treasures, all these ways that God's blessings are in our lives and as individuals and as communities. God would be overjoyed to see us actively engage in sharing, exchanging, living in those gifts, and not being afraid to be changed by that. And perhaps that's how the treasure is doubled. We are changed, and other people are changed. And we all fall in life and love, which God has given. Amen.